there is something, for instance, called the alien hand syndrome, in which somebody's hand starts acting as if on its own. Mm. And the other hand often goes like this. Okay, you actually see this. This is in like some in, the, in the Doctor Strange lab. Yeah, very with much, with very much, very much. The movies always have it first. <laughs> Believe me, it is. So in many ways, again, movies are and, and art in general. You know, that's a general theme. They see things before scientists ever get to them, and they see them more deeply. And so it, the fights within the same person, they happen, for instance, with the split brain. So after we split your brain in two, as we mentioned already, there's going to be one one on the right, left, one on the right, and very often after the surgery, they are going to fight each other. Mm. So for instance, one will try to put up some trousers and the other one will pull them, pull them down. It happens, it happens to patients. Okay? Who wins? One will button and the other one will unbutton. I mean, is there a dominant uh, hemisphere? So usually then it's the left side yeah. that takes control. And you start wondering what happens to the other guy. Is he riding along? Because it's very yeah. much, I think, the way you are depicting it in John Malkovich. So there is an early fight, and just like in some families, you know, after a while, somebody establishes dominance. And you've got one guy who controls and the other one who follows, or at least it used to be like that. And in that case, the left hemisphere usually, after a little fight, establishes dominance. And that's and, the more verbal? And that's the more verbal. So, mm. the, so the right hemisphere can't even, can't the even one complain, on the right. really. Uh, well, but I don't even mean that as a joke. I mean, it's like no. you're, you're a prisoner, right? Because you can't. He's a prisoner. And yeah. in fact, you know, the best thing you could say Although is that he probably right. gives up. You give up. Because for a while, he tries to fight. He but can't it win. It sounds like torture. I mean, is, is there enough of a person in that half of the brain to feel like they're being tortured? Or is it? Well, it does, tortured is not probably what the scientists who have studied this best, and again, this is Michael Gazzaniga, would say. There are some experiments which are quite amazing in which there was one boy of 16, 17 or so who had the operation, and he had a reasonably acceptable way of speaking through the right hemisphere. Mm -hmm. so he that would you actually could, speak to the right A little right bit, a few yeah. words. You know, yeah. There is always some language on the right yeah. side, yeah. too. So you could establish some communication with both. Mm -hmm. And in that case, they were, you know, it's one, n equal one, so you never know how representative it is. But the left hemisphere, for instance, wanted to be a pilot when he was going to grow up. The right hemisphere wanted to be a, an artist. So you even have something like that within the same skull. There are these two. Right. And they weren't fighting. And the right, in that case, the right hemisphere wasn't, say, complaining, like, you know, it's my first opportunity to get out. Mm -hmm. Finally, I can scream. Okay, no, nothing like that happened. But what is the state of mind? But After all, you share a body, you share a history. Probably you just delude yourself that you're acting. That's what we do all the time. <laughs> this is very much like what I, something that I keep thinking about when I think about consciousness. And, and I'd really like you to, to reflect on this and tell me what your feelings are about this. The, the moment of integration where we are in that particular state of consciousness is what we're aware of, but there seems to be an enormous amount of work going on in the background. And I sometimes have the feeling that all of those, all of those events in the background, just like the two hemispheres that you just talked about, are in competition for rising to the surface. So um, it makes me wonder about why I come up with the thoughts that I do when, when my mind is just uh, wandering. Is, is something like that going on, do you think? Think of personality, and not necessarily between the two brains separated by surgery, but also, you know, you, may, you, know, you wake up angry one morning and you don't know exactly why, okay? Yeah. So, and then suddenly, you know, somebody makes you laugh and yeah. you become more amenable. You've just you know? described every morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. So, is it switching? Is there a rivalry between the angry you and the happy you that are you know, fighting for control, are they both in there yeah. or not? And that is a question we don't really know the answer to. It seems to me that that is one of the differences between a human brain and an artificial brain, or the potential of an artificial brain, is that there, is a, there seems to be a lot of fighting going on inside a person. And I'm not, I'm not, sure, I'm, I'm not sure what it's for, but it's there. I mean, people argue with themselves all the time about, about decisions. They come from different places. Um, you know, ethical concerns and survival concerns and, um, 
you know, self-aggrandizing concerns and whatever it is, and they're all sort of mishmashed together, and there's not a clear single agenda. It occurs to me that that seems to be a difference, that it's not built into, or if it were built into, again, it would have to be built in in an artificial way. It's Are you talking about artificial uh, consciousness or artificial intelligence? Yeah, well, I'm talking about whether something can be artificially conscious, which, um, and, and, you know, I've been thinking about the things that seem to me different, specific to people or other animals, maybe, maybe just people for now, is, is that, that there is that um, um, confusion that's built into people, that's part of the process of determining things. It's not, an, it's not, it's not efficient the way a machine would be. I think, however, that's the secret of consciousness again, because if you have indeed these many, many, many specialists, each, if you wish, with their own interest and uh, with their friends and enemies, and they are all forming a single system together, in the end has to decide as a whole, because they're going to be conscious of this or of that. You're going to do X or Y. Right. But you've got to do it in a, in a way that includes everybody, very much like in a democracy, that is hard. Mm -hmm. Now, computers are not organized that way because nobody wants computers to be that way, and we even wouldn't know. But how there to are do it people exactly. trying to make emotional computers so that we'll respond to them more uh, comfort comfortably. But you see, I think we know emotion is extremely important, but it's clearly not the whole story. We underestimate our richness. The extraordinary, unique repertoire that every one of us has, not only of what he has experienced, but what he or she could experience.